so you had less time than usual for your halftime speech. What did you say that, that woke them up? Or what did somebody say that woke them up? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was really, um, the, the, you know, the talk at halftime was just stay with it. Like, they, I think they had made 13 threes in the first half. Yeah. And um, I didn't feel like we were um, playing, you know, terribly bad defense. It, it just, they, they were, uh, we, they didn't feel us enough. You know, they, we, we had to get more physical and get more into the ball. We did that in the third quarter. I thought Wiggs was great. Um, we played a fantastic game, but he, you know, he pressured uh, um, Kobe White um, to start that third quarter. And I think we were just a little more physical. And, um, you know, we got a, got into a good groove and had a great third quarter. And that obviously set the game up for us. It looked like you played some zone more in the third quarter. What, what did that do? Why did that work? Uh, yeah, we mixed it up. We played a few different um, zones and, and just tried to take them out of their offensive rhythm. They were, you know, they scored 75 points in the first half. So we had to try something and, you know, a little box and one, a little, um, you know, three, two, just try to, I mean, that, that's kind of what you have to do in the NBA these days. I mean, it's so hard to guard. Everybody shoots threes, um, the slightest bit of contact and it's two free throws. And so it's almost like college now in some ways where you try to mix and match defenses and keep teams off balance a little bit because it's virtually impossible to, you know, to, 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 to defend at a high level. It's just uh, the way the game is set up. Speaking of Wiggins, uh, you said a while back that you were hesitant to go back to the Wiggins Kuminga pairing. Mm -hmm. You closed with them today. What what did you like about what you saw from them today? Uh, well, I think. Um, Putting them with Dario um, helped spread the floor, um, and uh, I thought both um, J.K. and Wiggs were were just playing uh, such great games that um, you got to throw them out there. They're you know two of our best players tonight, and uh, I thought uh, J.K. it was it was maybe the best game he's played. Not just because he made four threes, but his spirit, and his energy. Um, he just he seemed right. He seemed comfortable. Um, the whole group, the whole team was just committed to, um, you know, let's go out and win. And, and um, very, very proud of them. You know, they've taken a lot of heat. We've all taken a lot of heat, you know, this past week, deservedly so. But this is what you do um, as a pro. Um, a lot of these guys are champions. Um, you got to respond, and they did tonight. How much of that energy and commitment is connected to the way of last week? I mean, from the fourth quarter of Denver through the deep Pistons yeah. game and the last two games, it's been about as bad a stretch as you've had all year. It, it, yeah, it was the worst stretch. These last three games, the Detroit game, we didn't play well either. But uh, I think uh, we um, we got off track emotionally, spiritually, the last couple games. Our fans could feel it. Um, we got booed for the first time since I've been here in 10 years. Um, and as I said, both nights we deserved it because our, our energy and our competitive spirit was not there. And we, we found that again tonight. Clay did. Clay was brilliant. I mean, he just, you know set the tone, hitting those two threes to start the third quarter, and they took the immediate timeout. And more importantly, um, all of the uh, assists, he had six of them. He kept finding uh, Trace on the dives to the rim because they were, you know, coming out to cover Clay because he was hot. And uh, when he keeps it simple like that and just shoots when he's open and keeps moving the ball, um, you know, he's that's when he's at his best. And we had five turnovers for the game. I mean, that's um, Raymond just said low, low in franchise history. Um, kind of crazy. Um, Thirty-nine assists, five turnovers, and it's still a game down the stretch. But like I said, this is this is the NBA. You, you know, everybody's scoring. Um, if one team, you saw it last night, one team makes threes, the other team doesn't. Somebody loses by fifty. Both teams make everything. It's 140 to, you know, 131 like tonight. It's a different league, and we're all adapting to that. Jerry Krause's name got booed at halftime during the ceremonies. Just what was your reaction? I, I didn't hear it. I was in the locker room, but somebody just told me about it, and it's shameful. It's absolutely shameful. Um, I cannot believe. Um, I'm devastated for Thelma and for uh, the Krause family. I, I, what, what can we possibly be th thinking? Um, I cannot believe um, that the fans, that, and you, you have to understand, when you hear boos, it's not all of them, right? So the fans who booed, um, they know who they are, and that's, um, to me, it's, it's absolutely shameful, and I, I'm, I'm devastated by that. Um, 
because it, it's just what what are we doing? You know, whether whether you, you know people liked Jerry or not, whether they disagreed with uh, the decision to you know to move on from the whatever the. Dis I mean, like, we're here to celebrate um, that team. Jerry did an amazing job building that team. Um, tonight was, and last night was all about the joy and the uh, the love that that team shared with the city. And I'm so disappointed in the fans. And I want to be specific because there were lots of fans, I'm sure, who did not boo. But those who booed, um, they should be ashamed. Just what you think of the halftime ceremony and the ring of honor? I was only out there for for the last few minutes because I was in, um, you know, in the locker room with my team, and and um, so I just the whole couple of days. Um, it was special to be with the whole group, uh, to see everybody, family members, uh, kids, seeing kids all grown up. Um, you know, that was a long time ago, but it was a really special era, and, and I, I've, I'm lucky to be a part of it and lucky to have played in Chicago. This is uh, an amazing city and a great place to play, and um, uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to have been honored uh, with the group, you know, these last couple of days. The other day you said it was sort of an unfair burden on Steph, yeah. the way things have been going. And he had struggled, obviously, shooting for a few games, again in the first half, yeah. and, and then abruptly sort of comes to life. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious if you can sort of speak to the burden he feels when the team's struggling, and how does he turn that around as quickly as he does? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think one of Steph's superpowers is in the middle of a an off night, um, you know, he can just ignite so quickly. And that takes the deepest level of confidence uh, that, that's possible, and that's what he has. So, um, you know, he took over uh, kind of mid-fourth, uh, you know, during that like, cold night. And, uh, but it's who he is. It's what makes him special.